So hopefully uh, now you try numbers one through six went really well for you. We're going to check those in class the next time we get together. And those answer keys will be uploaded onto Blackboard once we have a chance to meet and talk about those numbers, um, the, number, the answers that you guys got for numbers one through six. Moving forward, we want to talk a little bit about fractions as exponents. Some of you have may have seen this before. This may be new to some of you, but we want to make sure we review this because it's going to be important at some point during Unit 3. We don't always need to use radicals to write end roots. Okay? We can actually use what we call fractions as your exponents. So let me talk a little bit more in depth about what this is because there's a little bit of a pattern that goes along with it. Okay, so if I were to write something like the square root of 3, alright, you guys have known that for, for a long time. That number, that index number is actually invisible there, but we know that invisible number to actually be 2. Okay? So that index number, which is 2 in this case, if we wanted to, we could write this radicand, or this radical number, as an exponent, a fraction, exponent. And we do that by taking the inside radicand as our base, so the 3 is our base, over, and then in our exponent, we're going to have a fraction. Your fraction will always have your index as the denominator, and the number that is the whole value being raised to, that first power, since we're not changing anything, the 1 goes up on top. So we can always write our radicand or our radical values, our radical numbers, as exponential um, numbers with fractions as our exponents. So here's another example. Third root or cube root of 7 we can write as your radicand becomes your base. This whole thing is not being raised, it is being raised to a number, but it's being raised to an invisible number of 1. So that 1 becomes our numerator and our index because our, becomes our denominator. So the cube root of 7 can also be written as 7 to the 1 third power. Another example would be the fifth root of 9. The fifth root of 9, your radicand becomes your base. This whole thing's invisibly being raised to the first power, so 1 goes up in the numerator. Your index becomes your denominator, so the fifth root of 9 is also written as 9 to the 1 fifth power. Notice that your denominator of each exponent is equal to the index of the radical. All right, so the twos match up, your index and your denominator match up here, and your index and your denominator match up here. So let's look at example three together. Flip your page over, got example three, and we're going to evaluate the expressions here in example three. So in example 3, we have 9 to the 1 half power. So as we just talked about, we can go one way, but we can also go backwards. So if we're given 9 to the 1 half power, this is the same thing as, remember your radicand or your inside value is the same thing as your base, and your denominator is the same thing as your index. So this is the same thing as your 2, so your square root of 9, all raised to the numerator, which is 1. Okay? But since this entire thing is being raised to the first power, in previous lessons we've talked about how anything raised to the first power is just that same base. So this is the same thing as square root of 9, which can also be written as square root of 9 without your number 2 of your index being there. And we all know that our square root of 9 is plus or minus 3. So 9 to the 1 half power is the same thing as the square root of 9, which is positive or negative 3. In letter B, we have 16 to the 1 fourth power. So again, 16 to the 1 fourth power. Our 16 is inside our radical. Our denominator is our index. This whole thing's being raised, obviously, to the first power, which doesn't change anything. So we're looking for the fourth root of 16. Our index is positive, our inside radicand is positive, so we know we're going to have two answers. So what number can you multiply by itself four times to get 16? And we know that number to be 2. So letter B is positive, negative 2. In letter C we have 
64 to the one-third power, so if we rewrite this as a radical, we know 64 is our radicand, so that's the number inside our radical symbol. Our denominator, which is 3, is our index. This whole thing gets raised to the first power, which doesn't change the value inside. So what number multiplied by itself 3 tenths gives us 64? Again, we have an index that is um, odd, and we have an inside number that is positive. So we know we only have one solution, that solution is going to be positive. And if you know your numbers well enough, you know that number is going to be 4. Because 4 times 4 times 4 gives us 64. That's how you can always check. Up here you can always check by taking 2 times itself, 4 times, that's 16. You can check by taking negative 2 times itself, 4 times, that's also 16. You can do the same thing for letter A. So you can always go back and check your answers to make sure it makes sense. In letter D, we have negative 32 raised to the 1 fourth power. Again, our index is 4, so our 4 goes on our little ledge of our radical symbol. Negative 32 is our base here, so that transfers to being our radicand, our inside number. The whole thing's raised to the first power, which doesn't change anything. So let's look at this one. We have an even index and a negative inside radicand number, which we know we can't do, right? Just like we can't take the square root of a negative number, we can't take any root of a negative number if that root or index is um, even. So in this case, we have no real solution. Because if we ended up doing carrying this out, we would end up with an imaginary number because of that negative. So I want to take a little bit of time now, just like we did for numbers 1 through 6, and work on numbers 7 through 10 on your own at the bottom. Again, we'll talk about these answers the next time we're in class together to make sure that your answers match up with ours. We'll also upload the answer key to Blackboard in a couple of days, um, so you have access to that as well. But work on numbers 7 through 10 on your own, and we'll come back in our next video to talk a little bit more about example 5, um, actually example 4, and um, combining our powers and nth roots.